Alternative Experience. The Alternative Experience. The Alternative Experience. Hey everybody, Nikki Joe here. Welcome to Alternative Experience. Thanks for tuning in again. I think we're at episode 34, maybe 35. Well, we're getting there anyway. So today, language is everything. Uh, So every word that you use carries powerful energy. They can quite literally create, they can destroy Now, your words really do have power. Think of them like magic, maybe sort of black or white magic. They can be kind, compassionate, considerate, you know, white magic. They can be unkind, negative, even hurtful, you know, that black magic. And it's not just your spoken word and its effects on other people, although your words really can ruin someone's day uh, and even sort of go further in sort of toxic relationships, you can even sort of um, affect somebody's life with the wrong words. But the bigger problem is the internal words that we often use because oftentimes these actually feed directly into those outward words that we use anyway. So ask yourself this, is your internal voice positive or negative? Do you tend to think about all of the good things in your life? Uh, all the things to be grateful for, or instead, do you really sort of focus on what's going wrong? Worse still, do you often fixate on everything that could go wrong? Now, due to our biology and the way that we live our modern life, for the vast majority of people, it's certainly going to be the latter. We really have become completely disconnected from our own being. We don't understand ourselves. We no longer understand this body this this sort of biology that we have at all and in today's world it's even worse we now have the written word on the internet you know uh, to contend with words that we will often use anonymously and as such we're gonna sometimes use language and words that we wouldn't usually use in person I know I've done that myself before in the past try my best not to these days It's kind of like casting out black magic all day, every day, and it does nothing for your energy uh, whatsoever. So another issue these days is we often misinterpret written words um, of other people as we kind of read them as we perceive them. Um, If we're in a negative mindset or if we think negatively about a person, we're often going to automatically look for the, the conflict in what they've written. And oftentimes I think we... Um, we can misinterpret words sometimes deliberately. Now, is it really any surprise that our our lives and the world around us is currently steeped in so much conflict? I don't think that's a coincidence at all. Now, no matter how many years we may have been stuck in a negative loop, we do need to realize that we both have the power, the autonomy, and the choice over which type of words that we decide to use. Now, Often the word that we do select, we do so unconsciously. And much like learning to ride a bike, once we know it, it kind of happens automatically. It becomes a default setting. It's like a a synapse or a um, neuron in the brain, which has just been fused and fused and fused through repetitive use. And that's obviously a very useful tool when it comes to riding a bike or, of course, someone that's got a positive outlook on life. But with words... This becomes habit, and if the words that we're choosing are negative, that's obviously subconsciously going to form something that's not going to have a very good effect in, I think, every part of our, our general being. Obviously, if the, if the actual voice in your head, the overriding thing that's going on in your mind is negative, that's going to affect you, and I think it even affects you physically, in appearance, and also in ability. It really does have an enormous effect on your overall well-being and sorry to sound woo-woo, but your frequency and you don't even realize it. Now, it's really important for people to understand that 58% roughly of what they do during an average day is what we call habitual, which, which basically means it's completely automatic. It's based in that subconscious, breathing, heartbeat, blinking, 
These are all included too, but that also includes your thoughts and your words. Now, for some context, every person's going to have around about, give or take, 165,000 individual thoughts every single day. However, up to 95% of those are going to be the same thoughts that you had the previous day. Now, if you're living in gratitude and you're focusing on all the positive thoughts, everything that's good in your life, that's not a problem at all, as it's just going to continue to perpetuate those those positive feelings and thoughts. However, it's no secret that for most people, the glass is usually half empty. How many times have you heard somebody um, sort of say to you that we spend the majority of our days worrying about what might happen? Yet, if we really sort of stopped and analysed these thoughts at the end of every single day, it wouldn't take very long at all for us to realise that the majority of the time, they simply never do. Now, try and sort of analyse and think about how much time and energy you really spend or waste worrying about those things, uh, those things that just don't matter in any way, shape or form. Well, also consider how all-consuming they often are. You know, if you're thinking about and you're worrying about stuff, they take over your entire um, sort of hard drive. You haven't got any sort of volume left for anything else. Do you ever get that time and energy back? No, you don't. But it doesn't mean that it's not worth changing and changing as soon as possible. You really do need to realize that meaning your words creates meaning. Now, I know that sounds like a cheesy greetings card but say it a few times to yourself and think and see what you think about it but our experience of this life isn't life we only experience what we put our focus on and I suppose what we choose to label and when we label an experience with words it's so powerful it completely changes our biochemistry surrounding its meaning now I call this in my coaching program transformative vocabulary Now, no matter what, some people, no matter what happens to them, they're stuck in this negative kind of feedback loop. And as such, their default is to be reactive, angry, frustrated, agitated. They tend to be worried, um, overwhelmed. And as such, the words that they choose to label these experiences with kind of become their internal vocabulary and as such they just drive themselves deeper and deeper into this endless negative spiral. Now it may sound oversimplistic but if you change your vocabulary, you change the way you speak to yourself, you change your labels and you're going to change how you feel and in turn you will genuinely change how you get to experience the world around you. Now The goal may sound simple, (laughs) change your thoughts, change your words, Uh, but in reality it's not easy to change these defaults because usually they've been in place for for years, even decades, and like I say, it happens automatically, so it does take a concerted and very deliberate effort. Now, depending on how long you've had these kind of habits, you, you might have been this way all the way through your life, it might have happened in your teens, in your early 20s, whatever. But they tend to be pretty ingrained, and as such, they will need to be overridden with constant awareness and positive practice. Obviously, it's not just about the words that we use. It's also down to how we are feeling. For example, you can be the most positive person around, but when you're not sleeping okay, you're not getting enough sort of quality rest, you tend to become less focused, more agitated, and that black black magic can very, very easily begin to sort of take hold. So not only is it an ongoing exercise, but you will need to focus on building the awareness as well. One extremely useful tool that you can use to focus is focus on learning either softer words or softer phrases. If there are any sort of negative or abrasive words that you know you use often, whether it be about yourself or outwardly at all, then just learn a softer word or phrase to say the same thing. Now, I'll give you an example of that. Let me think of an example. Um, So if you change the term I have to to I get to, I mean, this is a really well-known one. 
that completely changes your associated chemistry. So rather than say to yourself, oh, I have to work tomorrow, simply change it to, I get to work tomorrow. That brings in a completely new meaning. Now, there are ways of actually sort of programming that by the fact that not everybody's got a job. You know, not everybody has um, that problem that you've got to go and earn money and keep a roof over their head. Not everybody is as lucky as you are. Um, some people can't work because of illness, disability, um, but normally because of the economic climate where they live. So just try and, as I say, turn that frown upside down. Look at the glass as if it's half full. Another really useful exercise is also pay special attention to maybe patterns in your language. And this also needs to include your body language. So think of things like um, rolling your eyes or huffing and puffing or anything outward that you do. I mean, very early on in my relationship, my wife, she told me, she said, your face doesn't hide how you feel. So you have to work on that, not to hide how you feel. That's also part of your, your, your language, your body language. So if you're constantly showing people that you're disappointed or um, looking down at them in some way, that's not a positive energy or a positive um, uh, sort of language to be using. So yeah, look at how, how you react because that does actually affect yourself negatively as well. So if you're constantly reacting like that, it's not just you're throwing that out to people, that's going to have an overall uh, impact on yourself. But simply by going out of your way to say positive and loving things to your family or using softer, more constructive language, in, in especially in challenging situations, is going to have an immediate positive impact on everybody involved, yourself and those obviously involved in the exchange. Now, this will also ensure that your thoughts become more positive um, especially when you're in their presence. And it just, again, it just really, it compounds very, very quickly. Now, it might sound a bit woo-woo to some, but we are, I mean, we are officially, uh, no, no sort of doubt about it, beings of frequency and energy, atomic frequency and energy. And we are highly tuned to feed off the energy around us. And our energy, our frequency has an enormous impact on those around us too. Now, a couple of examples or ways to soften your words, just a few more, just to get you sort of uh, on the right track, is rather than say, I mean, I deal with a lot of people with ang anxiety, so I say rather than say you're anxious, say I'm a little bit concerned. Or rather than say I'm disappointed, <laughs> not, not, I'm not going to say what you think, just say, I'm a little bit underwhelmed. You know, you can say the same thing to people without it being a dig or a jab or even something that's going to sort of cast black magic back to yourself. Now, your biochemistry will be extremely different based on those two sort of examples I've just given you. Your mind is extremely powerful. It's extremely intuitive um, and it's very sensitive too. If you tell it that you're anxious... That's exactly how you are going to feel. Now, those statements obviously say the same thing, but in a much less extreme way. And as such, it's going to allow your subconscious to gain a bit of perspective, allowing you to stay in control of any given situation. Now, it doesn't only benefit your biochemistry, but it also improves your relationships with those around you. As much as the words that you use internally are either black or white magic to your own thoughts the words that we use externally are also just as bad if we're constantly using negative critical inflammatory language to those around us we're also going to be affecting their biochemistry and that's just going to ensure that the negative feedback loop gains even more momentum as you pass it uh, sort of between each other now if you tell your child this is another example that they're bad enough times they're going to begin to believe it until eventually their own actions and their own internal dialogue will begin to match that. And this is going to guarantee that the same negative limiting mindset that you've had is going to be passed on to the next generation in your family line. 
So be the one to stop that negative cycle, change your words, and change your life. I say this all the time, don't get to your deathbed and regret not appreciating how amazing this life really is. Every human on this planet is, in its simplest terms, an absolute bloody miracle from conception right the way through to the day that we actually die. Our bodies, our minds, the delicate chemical balance, the the many vast and intricate systems, actions, functions that we perform without even knowing it, even the millions, think about this, I think about this all the time, think about the millions of living communities that we house in our body that we also rely upon for our own health. Now realize today that you are the miracle that you've been waiting for and treat yourself as such. Uh, Be grateful for all the simple things like breathing, living, family, nature, friendship. Make your own list and really, really focus on it. But stop surviving every day. Start thriving every day, guys. You know what I say. This life is not a dress rehearsal. Make it count. But change your words. Change your life. Change your relationships. It really is that powerful. And if you need help to get there, sign up to one of my programs today. How much is it? Those are the wrong words. What investment do I need to make to completely change my life is what you should be asking. (laughs) Anyway, like, share, comment as always. And if you haven't yet, guys, please hit that subscription bell. Likes and comments, especially on platforms like Spotify and Apple, They really do help us to get picked up by the algorithm. So if there's anybody out there that can just give me a quick five-star rating, give me a little comment, that would be much, much appreciated. But um, yeah, until next time, guys, appreciate your time. Speak to y'all soon. Peace.